Hi, my name is Fernando Hurtado with The Middle Row, and today I'll be giving you an inside look at how National Geographic is doing economically and how it plans to deal with the digital age. Magazines in general have been hit hard by the advent of the digital age. In the past few years, overall print circulation has gone down for print magazines. However, 2011 saw the lowest drop in sales since 2008 at 1%. Single copy sales have been hit even harder. In 2011, we saw an 8.9% decrease compared to an 8.2% decrease in 2010. And while this is a scary number, it doesn't affect National Geographic the same way it affects other magazines. And that's because 56% of National Geographic's revenue comes from television programming. That's not to say the digital age isn't affecting National Geographic magazine. While National Geographic is ranked number 6 among the top 25 magazines in the United States, it still saw a 0.3% decrease in 2011. That means it went from 4.49 million people to 4.48 million people. Now, that's nothing compared to the 48% increase Game Informer Magazine saw that same year, and it's also nothing compared to the 5.9% decrease the double ARP bulletin saw in 2011. Now, while this isn't as big of a change as National Geographic is seeing, it's still a change nonetheless. Even though National Geographic circulation has managed to remain up there compared to that of other magazines, it's still seen a 50% drop since the 1980s in its English language circulation. Now the way that National Geographic has managed to keep those numbers up there is through the 2.5 million subscribers it's gathered through the 30 plus foreign editions it's released since its conception. And while its television counterpart is doing exceedingly well, this does not mean National Geographic won't continue to search for new innovative ways to remodel its editorial version. Now currently, National Geographic counts with 1,500 full-time employees, but it's also counting on amateur writers to carry out its new initiative, vlogs. Blogs will be written both by full-time employees out in the field and by readers out in the world. This is in an effort to switch over from the older once-a-month content model that National Geographic once had to the newer, more modern, daily content that we see on the web for other magazines and newspapers. Now, the editor of National Geographic says this is because we're going to try to move people to digital from print as fast as we can because we think there's a certain inevitability that will happen. That's it for me on the business side of things, but I welcome you to check out the rest of our coverage on National Geographic to get a glimpse of the audience, the technology, the personalities, and the editorial magic that goes on behind the science behemoth. Simply head over to historyandnews.uscannenberg.org and click on the middle row.